What's up, bros? Welcome to another BroGraph tutorial. I'm Dave Koss, and I wanted to talk about folder structure today. If you're new to this industry and you're working on projects, you probably don't know exactly where or how to save all your files. You might come up with your own system. You might uh, just be throwing files everywhere, and that's what I did at first. I threw files all over the place, and I had a weird naming structure, so I would know what, what was what. And I've over the years developed a little bit of a folder structure and where it may not be exactly what you need specifically for what you do this is always a good starting point I've given this to a lot of people and, and a lot of people have really stuck with this format throughout the years so I'm gonna go through some of these folders and let you know how it works and, and why it works and what each folder is and then I'll also leave a zip file with an empty folder structure for you and that's what I like to do. I like to take the empty folder structure and I save that in a directory called reference somewhere on my computer and it's something that I can copy and paste into a brand new fresh project every time so that I'm not worried about renaming these folders when I get started and I'm not worried about where anything has to go. I, already, I always know where it's going to go and if I'm working with people who are using the same structure they're able to get an idea of where everything is going to be and they just kind of know that this is where their files are going to be or this is where they need to put certain files it works really well I'm gonna start with I'm not gonna start on the edit side I'm gonna start with the graphics side because usually I'm doing graphics usually if you're working on a graphic and someone else is working on an edit project and they're somewhere else you could give them just this section and this would have all your files organized their portion of it their file structure might be different so that's why we're starting with just graphics I like to call my graphics folder from graphics department you can call it of course whatever you want and inside it's really simple I just put uh, abbreviations for all the different types of software I'll be using simple enough here I've got After Effects AEP and that of course is where all your After Effects files are gonna go which you can also choose to do if you want which I do sometimes if I have a lot of textures that I'm gonna be using inside of After Effects you could put a little text folder TEX inside After Effects we got the AI folder this is usually where stuff is gonna come from a client like a logo of some sort of vector logo something you're gonna bring into Illustrator you're probably gonna mess with it and get it ready to extrude in cinema and then you're gonna save it of course you're gonna save it as an Illustrator 8 file because for some reason that's all the only thing that these programs import I don't get that um, audio audio is for anything that you have to line up with audio so you can bring that into your cinema 4d project the Cinema 4D folder, C4D. What you do with your main Cinema 4D projects is you put them right here in the root of Cinema 4D. This is so you can get to all your your projects and you're not worried about like other stuff thrown in like JPEGs and movie files and junk like that. Under Cinema 4D text, this is kind of how Cinema 4D works is all the textures are always going to be located in here. Um, so I just go ahead and I create this text folder and I save everything there um, because I know that that's where Cinema 4D is going to throw it anyway. Under Render, this is where your rendered image sequences from Cinema 4D will go. So you're saving something out, you're saving your render, I usually call it render, and then um, I'll also call my image sequences render because they all automatically uh, put, the, put the prefix in front of it. Um, or, or after it I can't remember the uh, it's after it the uh, vector formats the uh, vector passes the depth passes the object buffer passes all of that stuff so they can all go into this folder and it will say render depth render motion and then if you have multiples the other thing you could do instead of just calling this render you could call this render underscore um, house and render underscore sky if you have different renders put all those different image sequences in their own render folder so if we back up we're back in this directory here PR or FCP for Premiere or Final Cut and this isn't for your editor this is for you if you're gonna open up a Premiere file or a Final Cut file and kind of mess with some of the final product that you've done maybe cut something or 
colorize something or, or, or anything where you're just messing around with your footage, this is where you would put those project files. In the PSD folder, this is where Photoshop files would go. Maybe something you get from a client. Um, maybe something that's going to be a texture but isn't quite a texture yet. I also like to keep a logo for my company and a slate in there in case I'm doing an edit because I can bring in those Photoshop files, especially slate. Uh, if I'm working in Final Cut Pro and I'm not using the titler in, in Premiere, I'll leave a PSD of a slate in there in case I want to slate something. I can change the name and I can put whatever I want on it and then I know that I don't have to go searching for a slate and then copying it and pasting it somewhere else every time I want to make a slate for a specific project. It's just automatically there and it's just kind of a template. In the reference folder, this is where you put any sort of research you're doing, anything anyone sends you, something you need to trace possibly, or maybe you're maybe you're building a house and you're doing research on different types of houses, different types of bricks. You just dump all that stuff in there. Put links in there, put JPEGs in there, put anything that's a reference file. Then under render, this is where your final render will go. After you bring in those image sequences and after effects and you're messing with them and you do everything how you want it and you put filters on it and noise it up and vignette it and do all of that stuff, you'll do your final export and this is where you put that. It is in the from graphics department render folder. If you're working on uh, some sort of production that has supers in it, like maybe a commercial, there's also a supers folder that you can put your supers in. So that covers the from graphics department folder. Now, if you want to know a little bit more, more about um, an edit folder structure, I'll go ahead and do that too. We got, oh look, flutter structure, spell it wrong. All right. Audio. This is where your audio will go for a project you're working on, just like we did with graphics. Here's our graphics folder, of course. Then we have grades. If somebody's actually grading the footage, this is where they can put the grade files. And we got project files. We got Premiere and After Effects. Sometimes you'll have Final Cut Pro. Sometimes you'll have Avid. I mean, who knows? But this is where I like to, to do this. Project files go in here. So it isn't actual renders, just project files. So if you look in here, like uh, PR, what I like to do is set up um, edit projects that already have folders inside of them. So when I open Premiere, I don't have just a bunch of empty bins or, or no bins at all. I can actually have empty bins that have different things in them, like an audio folder, like a supers folder, footage, graphics, um, all of that kind of stuff already kind of made, maybe a slate reference in there, something like that, so that I can just start working. I can just start dragging stuff into Premiere and that template's all ready to go. I can have maybe black on the sides and, and like I said earlier, a slate or an audio channel where I can drop in audio. It just makes things run smoother if you think ahead that way. Under rendered, I have a couple different things here. This is um, partially for the client. This is approvals. You would put any sort of approval you're going to send your client into here. Um, and then you label them that way. You can say such and such underscore uh, approval zero one approval zero two I recommend using underscores because if you're going back and forth between Mac and PC and you're using FTP and all of that don't use spaces use underscores it'll make your life easier later when something gets gets screwy and you have to relink or send someone a file uh, CG elements these are elements that are from like a compositor usually um, so if somebody takes a scene that you worked on and they dirty it up and add some sort of uh, comp layer in it, they put it back in, you can bring this back into your project later on and that's where all of the CG stuff will go. Finish, that is uh, pretty self-explanatory. That's where your final project goes in your final format when you're done. From Edit Raw, this is actually where you put stuff before it goes to get uh, some, some sort of composite made. So you're working on your edit and you want to export something and rather than, let's say you're not using any, any sort of XML export and you're not using anything like, um, like Hero or anything like that. You just want to export a straight shot, send it to somebody, have them change it for you, add the compositing and send it back. Your raw goes in here. You send it to them, they give it back, you put it in CG elements. Then under the scratch folder, we have a couple things here. We've got stock footage, 
which you can put stuff that you use on a regular basis in here or maybe stuff you bought then you have a transfer folder and what I like to do in the transfer folder um, by default I use a lot of uh, Canon 5D Mark II, Mark III footage so I kind of put the same folder structure in here that goes on the cards you can do this with anything you can do this with a GoPro you can do this with uh, red you can do this with with anything but especially if you're using something like um, like a Panasonic like an HVX something that uses P2 cards you can actually put that folder structure in here pull the stuff off the cards keep them in here in the right way keep them in here in the same folder structure that it was on the card so you won't have any problems later if you want to send some of the footage if you need to import it a certain way especially if you're in Final Cut like the old the Final Cut 7 where you're bringing stuff in and you're doing a log and transfer and it has to be in the exact same order when you're working on your projects just put them in the scratch folder exactly as they were so that you don't have any problems doing those imports that pretty much covers it uh, hopefully this is useful to you let me go ahead and change that name it's not flutter folder structure if you found this useful let me know um, I think it's it's been very helpful for me um, and a lot of people that I know and just to just to really get a good gr uh, grasp on what you're doing and not have files everywhere um, I will put this as a zip file as well um, with the post on brograph.com so if you go on there you can download the file and you can start using it let me know what you think uh, please subscribe to us on YouTube and uh, get with us on Facebook. Let us know what you think. Um, if you have any ideas about a tutorial you'd like to see, let us know. If you have questions, let us know. Uh, what else? Twitter. Get on Twitter. Follow us on Twitter. Follow us on everything. Um, we, also, we also go into the Cinema 4D subreddit, r slash Cinema 4D sometimes as well, and hang out there. So until next time, have a good one. Later, bros. Pretty good, I guess.